Ephesians chapter number 5. I'll be reading verse 15 and 16, I think. Yes, all right, I was looking at 4. Woo! Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15 and 16. If you'll read along with me, amen. Hallelujah. Let me, let, me, let me just read, start with 14. Wherefore he saith, Awaketh, Awake thou that sleepeth, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that we walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Amen? See not that we walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Redeeming the time. Everybody say that. Redeeming the time. Redeeming the time. I want to preach, teach, preach, combination, a little bit of all of it tonight. Two words that we all need to hear. Slow down. Slow down. You, God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for your blessings. Thank you for your word and for your spirit. God, I pray, Lord, that you would speak to our hearts tonight, God. Let your word come to us and, and reveal itself in a whole new way. God, there's, there's no new message. There's no new gospel. There's no new direction, Lord, that's going to be given to us other than what's already written in your word. God, but I pray and I, I feel in this day that we're living that we need to, to ask and we need to seek revelation of the word that's already been given, Lord, that, we, that our lives would become better equipped to, for the battle that we face. Lord, in the name of Jesus, give us strength, give us courage, and give us wisdom tonight from your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. I do believe we are in a battle, not so much personally, and I know that we face our personal battles, and I know that churches as a whole face battles and things come against churches and, and churches have to deal with issues and, and people and, and circumstances and, and but I, 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 even a bigger picture than that the army of God the kingdom of God is under attack and we are in a battle and, 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 and us being fit to fight the battle determines how, you know how fit we are to fight the battle determines whether we're going to make it or not Amen. Whether we're going to be laying on the on the battlefield wounded, mortally, or whatever. Hallelujah. I, I, I sing that song a lot. I may have gone down in the heat of the battle, but don't count me out of the fight. Amen. Praise God. I believe it's important that we as children of the Lord gain every bit of knowledge and strength and wisdom that we can from the voice and the word of God in this day that we live. And you're not gonna you're not gonna get what you need talking to the Lord one time a week. I was talking brother David uh, in the back, and we he was just being honest with me and about some things. And and you know, uh, seemed to me there there's there's some folks that thinks they can get enough God once every two weeks. You know, just uh, you know, and that's the only time. And that that might work if if them other six days, if uh, if them other uh, two weeks got fourteen. If those other thirteen days, you'd find a place to pray and read the Word of the Lord. Amen. Praise God. But I believe we need to look at our time. The Bible says that we need to make sure we walk circumspectly, not as fools. In other words, walk knowing and being aware of how we're walking. Amen. I believe we need to take note of our life that we live for the Lord. I, I, and y'all have heard me say this before. You're not going to make it to heaven by accident. Amen. You're, you're gonna, not going to, you're going to have to you're going to have to, to pay attention. It says walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. You may say, well, I, I'm not. You know, we can all be wise when it comes to Scripture. Amen? And you may say, well, I don't understand everything in the Bible. You don't have to understand everything in the Bible, all the, the, the prophecies and all the things and all the hidden. As long as you've got the basics of the Word of God, knowing how it's wise to have faith in God. Hallelujah. I want to tell you, it's wise to know that you've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. It's wise to know that when God, when everything else fails you, you know God is not going to fail you. 
It's wise to know that you can go to him in prayer. It's wise that you know that you know you can speak his name. Hallelujah. In the middle of a battle and he'll come to where you are. Amen. Pray. Being wise in, in God's word is not that, not necessarily knowing every little detail about every scripture and what's going to be in the future. It's just knowing that. How many wants to know just the base? God let me know what I need to know to get me through this battle. Hallelujah. And I want to tell you, it's going to take time. It's going to take us devoting our time. He says, uh, don't walk as fools, but walk as wise, redeeming the time. Because the days are evil. We are living in evil days. Amen. And I, I think every one of us here tonight that, that will admit it and will really open our eyes to the facts, you will have to say that it's not been ever any time in America that, it, that like it's been in, in the times that we're facing. I can't tell you about the third world countries. I can't tell you about Russia and England and, and Africa and all them, and Antarctica and Australia and all them, Brother Woody. I ain't never been there. But I know that in America we have seen an increase in evil. We have seen an increase in hate and, and all the things that we're, we're seeing. It, it, it's just bad. But the Bible tells us to redeem our time. Redeem the time that we've been given because the days are evil. Amen. Hallelujah. And I, I, I done a little looking around. And back in the late 1950s, there was a doctor by the name of Larry Dossey that, that, that uh, named a certain ailment, I guess, a certain state of mind. And he, he, put, he, he named this thing, and he called it hurry sickness. It was actually diagnosed and given a name by a doctor in the 1950s, and he called it hurry sickness. And, and it, was, it, was, it was defined as rushing about in a mad rush. That was one of the things that defined it. The second thing that defined this hurry sickness was a compulsion to do everything quickly. Amen? And the third thing was a chronic feeling of constantly being short of time. Anybody ever got, anybody got any of them symptoms? I'm going to tell you probably 95% of the people in the world today has got those symptoms. We all probably got a little taste of hurry sickness. We all got, probably got a little touch of her. You know, you come, I got a little touch of a cold or I got a touch of the flu. You ain't never had a touch of the flu. You either got the flu or you don't. <laughs> and what tickles me, these people that has the flu, the next day they're out running around, uh-uh. You get the flu, buddy, it, it take, keeps you down. Another thing that tickles me, here I am meddling. Another thing that tickles me, you know, I, 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 I enjoy Facebook. and look at Another thing, people get on Facebook, you pray for me, I got an awful migraine. Well, sister, brother, if you had a migraine, you wouldn't be on Facebook. If you had a real migraine, praise God, hallelujah. But, but this sickness, and, and it causes, and this is really what jumped out to me. And this, this, you know, it causes anxiety and insomnia. Anybody facing can't sleep? I do. Hallelujah. Anybody have trouble with anxiety? A lot of times we don't want to admit these things because we think people will look down on us and think we're crazy and think there's something wrong with us and think we need to go to, you know, get some kind of help somewhere. I want to tell you we are living in a world that anxiety and insomnia and loss of rest is wrecking havoc on families. Amen. Hallelujah. This is different than anything I've ever preached, but I, I feel it. If I've ever felt anything, I feel it. Hallelujah. We have got to learn to redeem our time. God tells us, you redeem the time because the days are evil. Amen. It causes insomnia. It, and it's, it, what, it, what he really defined it as is an increased sensitivity of the passage of time. You just get real antsy because you feel like time's getting away from you. And people get overcome with that. And they feel like they're running behind. And they feel like they can't get enough done. They feel like they're just, just always behind. Anybody ever felt like that? I want to tell you, I believe it's something that the devil is attacking the church with today. Come on. 
I believe it's, I absolutely believe he's not going to get some of us to go out and shoot heroin up in our veins. He's not going to get some of us to go down to the local bar or the local liquor store and get blasted, get plastered out drunk. Hallelujah. He's not going to get some of us to go pull a gun and kill somebody or, or do some things. But if he can steal our time, if he can get us full of anxiety, if he can get us restless and tired, amen. Hallelujah. Can I know that this is now do y'all see why that I, I'm, I'm probably gonna preach part two Sunday? I believe everybody needs to hear this. Amen. And I I know I do. I have dealt in the past and I've made statements and I've I've even discussed and talked to people. It just seems like you're kind. Anybody ever said it feels like I'm always running behind? Amen. Praise God. People say these statements. Anybody, any of these statements sound familiar? My plate is too full. Living in the fast lane. Eagles wrote a song about that. It'll make you lose your mind. <laughs> That's back from my teenage years. Living in the fast lane. Not enough hours in the day. Anybody heard those sayings? Anybody do like this with me? Anybody said stuff like that? Yes, I have. I have said things like that. I have thought like that. I have allowed the, 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 the rush of everyday life sometimes to, and I believe every one of us can say this. Every one of us, I believe, and I'm not pointing fingers and I'm not scolding, but I promise you, I probably believe that most of us in this place tonight have allowed the stress and the rush to take away from the time that we spend with God. Amen. We might as well say amen. Amen. Symptoms. And I'm just going to, uh, this, this is, is part one, so hold that in mind. The symptoms of this, of, of this uh, uh, always uh, be, having an increased sensitivity to the passage of time. How many has ever done this? How many, you know, and I'm just, I'm, I'm being real tonight. This, like I said, this is going to be different than anything. You look at your watch, or I don't look at my, you know, I, I wear a watch sometimes, and sometimes I don't. But you look at your watch, and you say, Oh, look at the time. I'm going to be late. Look at the time. I'm going to be late. And we hate waiting. We go to McDonald's or the post office or somewhere, and the people in front of us seem to take forever. I know this is simple. And, and, and we don't like it unless they pay it forward. <laughs> We, we do the, we hate traffic lights. I'm talking about me. I've made the statement going through the little town of Corinth before. I think I've hit every red light in the town. And how many has done this? You come up to a red light, you slow down, you see it turning red, and you'll look at both lanes to see which has got the clunker in it. Because you don't want to get behind the clunker because he's going to take forever to get going. Why? Because we're in a rush. We're, we're, we're pushing ourselves. We want to go fast. And if the fella in front of you don't get to going fast enough, you'll, you'll find a little, little, just a little hole and you'll go around him. You'll pass him in the right lane. Amen. I, I, I'm telling you, amen. You, and here's a good one. You go to two, the two checkout lines that's open at Walmart. If you're lucky. Now I told y'all this is going to be different. Y'all bear with me. You go to the two checkout lines at Walmart and you look to see who's got which line's got the most in it and you don't stop there. You look and count the items in the cart to see which line is going to move faster. Why? Because we're in a rush. We're pushed and we've been programmed that we've got to get through quick. And it's caused our heart rates to speed up. It's caused blood pressure to go up. 
It's caused us anxiety. It's caused stress. Come on. It's caused ulcers. It's caused everything. And I want to tell you, everything that you fight physically is eventually going to hinder you and fight you and cause you to, it affects you spiritually. Come on. Hallelujah. If others are served before us, it annoys us. Come on. This is one that I've experienced. I mean, has ever flew in an airplane or a jet? They'll come on and they say, don't, don't, don't stand up. There. You're coming in for a landing. Don't stand up until the seatbelt light goes off. And that seatbelt light to go off and you're still taxiing down the driveway or the runway, the driveway. A good 10 or 15 minutes before the doors, before the plane stops and the doors open, and as soon as that seatbelt comes off, that light, people start standing up, reaching up and pulling their stuff down, knocking you in the head, trying to get out in the aisle to get ready to get on, off the plane, knowing that they're going to have to stand there 15 or 20 minutes They'll even come from behind you. You ain't. You better watch out. Somebody behind you will run over you. They'll pull their big their big satchel down from the and knock you in the head. Because amen. Why? Because people are in a constant rush. I know I'm giving some examples here tonight. Amen. But does anybody anybody kind of know? We want to slow down. Amen. How many wants to slow down? How many would like to be able to slow down? to just kind of slow down. We want to slow down, but we're afraid if we slow down, the world will fall apart. We're afraid if we slow down, if we don't keep pushing, then everything's going to fall apart. Everything's going to go haywire. I want to tell you, one day we will slow down permanently. And you know what? The world's going to keep on going without us. Hallelujah. Oh, God, help us, Lord. And you know, it sets this thing sets in about 30 years old. So some of you that's pushing close to 30, Tyler and Jenna and, and Luke and Kelsey and Heather and some of you that, that you know, getting close to 30, and, uh, you know, it, it, it kicks in about 30 and it gets worse the older you get. A am, I, am I making any sense tonight? Hallelujah. I, I want to tell us, amen. And I want to tell you before God created heaven and earth, there was no time. The Bible says He is eternal. Before He recreated, before He formed this world, it was just a, it was just a massive space. It was space and there was no time. There was no measurement of time. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and we know this for a fact because I'll go to first Peter and I, I mean second Peter and I am going to read some scripture tonight. This ain't all just Titus. Amen. 2 Peter chapter number 3 and verse number 8 says but be beloved but beloved be not ignorant of this one thing one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years is one day in other words God does not make God is not controlled by time I've heard people say try to take that and use it in prophecy and say the, that ain't got nothing to do with prophecy that's just telling you that God is not con, he's not conformed to time he's not held by time he don't look at time like humanity looks at time it, it's don't matter if it's a day or if it's a thousand years it don't matter with God Amen. He's, he's timeless. Amen. And God entered this world and he entered down. He was in the throne room of heaven and he said, I got to get down there and get some redemption plan going for my people. Hallelujah. Because they're dying. They're going to hell and there's, I've got to do something. And he wrapped himself in flesh and he stepped out of eternity in heaven and he stepped on this earth into human time. And he came down to where we were. And he, he, he made himself subject to time. And even, and, and you know, it, just at his birth, there's a time. It, it's controlled by time. Christmas time, amen. His birth is, I mean, we associate that with time. And everything about Jesus, we associate it with time. And we put a time on it. But I want to tell you, my God don't know no time, amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. There's not a one of us that's the master of time. They've got these fancy clocks and they, they do all these atomic clocks and stuff that can measure time down to the millisecond. And they think, well, if we can get the timing right. And I, you know, if 
football and playing quarterback and passing is a lot about timing. And, and I, I, I enjoy football. And the quarterback, he'll, he'll drop back and take a three-step drop, and he knows the route that receiver's running, and he'll throw the ball to that, it, it, that, that expected route even before the receiver turns around. And if the timing gets thrown off, the ball's going to be short or long, or it's not going to get to where it goes. So timing plays a part in everything that we do. From cooking to sleeping to going to work. Come on. Hallelujah. So we cannot get away from being controlled by time. We cannot, be in, we cannot get away from, from being under the, the influence of time. Amen. But no one is the master of time. We really don't understand time. Has anybody ever sat down and tried to figure it out? I hope this is interesting to you. I hope I'm not making a just a blundering mess tonight. But I hope you're getting something out of this. I mean, there's there's moments in our life that seem to rush by. Come on. We we have moments in our life that seem to just rush by. And then we have moments in our life that seem to stand still. Can I get a can you can I get a witness of that? There's, there's times that, that we are aware of that time. We, we become aware of time because we're, 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 uh, we're working on a project that's got a deadline or we're racing against the clock. And, and if you're working on a project that's got a deadline, you are aware of the time. Amen? If you're racing against the clock, if you're doing something that, that has to be done by, you become very aware of the time, amen? And it, and, it, and it controls us, amen? But there are moments that we just throw our watch aside and, and, and forget about the time and we just enjoy a day of leisure and hardly even notice time passing at all. Amen. Redeeming the time. Slow down. Slow down. Can I tell you something? We say it, but time doesn't really fly. I've said it. That clock ticks at the same speed every day. Boy, y'all are looking at me like, well, you don't know what you're talking about. That clock ticks at the very same speed. It, it don't speed up. <laughs> Y'all know I'm saying it too. It sure does seem like it sometimes. It, it, it doesn't speed up. Days and you see, hours and days and weeks and years pass by the same speed as they have done since the dawn of time. Come on. God started this thing. He put this thing in motion. And it's still just like he made it. <laughs> Some of y'all. <laughs> it really don't. It really don't fly. It's the same. A second is still a second. A minute is still a minute. <laughs> Sister Patsy's going to have to have a, an inhaler here if I don't. Amen. But we keep, can I tell you something? We keep blaming time for our need to rush. I, I want to get, get down to where we are. We keep blaming time for the push and for that need that we feel to rush through life. And I'll, I'll, I'll get spiritual. I may get more spiritual in the second part than I do this one. But ain't y'all got? Ain't y'all glad that y'all got the comedy show on, on Wednesday night? Amen. The fault does not lie with time itself. It's not time's fault. Because like I said, it really don't fly by. It's the same as it's always been. It's not time's fault. God gives us the time to do everything that's important. 
Let me say that one more time, and I want you to grab a hold of that, and I want you to listen to what I'm saying and think about it. God has given every one of us the time that we need to do what's important. Amen? Time is a gift from God. How many is thankful that he gave you life? And with that breath and with that heartbeat, that's measured by time. Everything that God created is measured by time. With that breath and with that heartbeat, heartbeat comes the time that God has gifted us with. And he has given every one of us enough time to do the important things and to take care of the important things in our life. The Bible says now is the accepted time. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. You've got time to repent. You've got time to be born again. You've got time to live for God. We just have to redeem the time that we have. Amen. He gives us time. I believe he gives us time to do these things. And I, I'm just going to mention a few here. Four or five things here. And I'm, I'm not, you know, I, I just want to mention some important things. He gives every one of us time to work, to worship, to pray, to spend time with family, and to serve others. Now you tell me. Is that not important? Are those things not important? How many's glad you took the time to come tonight? To apparently somebody's oh Jesus. Oh, well, let me get on down. Let me just preach, okay? I'll get. Amen. He gives us time to do this. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes, and y'all all know the 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 verse of scripture that I'm fixing to read. To everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose. Under the heaven. It didn't say for everything you wanted to do. It said for every purpose. What's our purpose? Him. What are, what, what are you going to do if you don't make sure that you don't take the time to do what you need to do? You're, you're going to end up in a place that has no time marking again. In a place that you don't want to be. Amen. God didn't. Can I, tell, can, I, can I just say this? God didn't make a mistake in creation. By making the days too short. How many believes that God miscalculated. When he. Set the moon and the sun in orbit. I mean the, set the sun and the moon. Up there and he turn, started turning the earth in orbit. How many, how many thinks. Well he, he miscalculated. He made the day too short. He gave us the time for a purpose. He created us and gave us time to do the things that are important. Let me, let me go to Ephesians chapter number 2. Am I, am, I, am I making any sense? Ephesians chapter number 2 and verse number 10. I want to read this verse of scripture. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. Unto good works, unto good works which God hath ordained that we should walk in them. Now, if He created us, we're His workmanship, and He created us unto good works, and has ordained that we should walk in them, I promise you that He's given us the time, He's provided the time that we need to do, to have to do those things. Amen. How many believes if he if he means he his word tells us he's created us in his image unto good works and has ordained all of that? I don't believe he said that. And said, "Oh, I made a mistake. I didn't give him enough time." Oh, way over in Ephesians, he figured out he didn't give us enough time. Then people that live, Sister Patsy, but from Genesis to Ephesians, they got cheated. No. 
He did, it didn't take him till he gave this writer of Ephesians this verse of scripture. He didn't all of a sudden wake up and realize, Brother Jack, oops, I didn't make the day long enough. Yes, he made it long enough. He said, I've prepared you, I've created you unto good works, which God hath ordained that we should walk in them. It, oh, Lord. Now, I'll make sure I repeat this one Sunday because you good folks are here, but I want to just give you a little peek. If we don't have time for things in our life, then I don't feel like we've managed the time that God gave us very well. Woo! Y'all shout tonight because I know the Sunday morning crowd ain't going to shout on that one. I want you to think about that. God created us. Put us on this earth. Put an eternal soul on the inside of us. Made it clear that we was going to spend a time, eternity in heaven or in hell. Gave us the remedy for sin. Told us what we need to do and how we need to go about being born again and live for him. And you're going to tell me that he's not going to give us enough time to do what's important and save our soul? And if we don't have enough time to take care of what's important in our life, then I'm afraid we've misused the time he's allowed us. Whew. I'm about finished with this part. But Paul gave some very good advice here in the book of Ephesians. Paul was very aware of the things that will move into human lives. He's, he's very aware of the things that will take control of our lives. Amen? I want to tell you there's time stealers that's out there. I'm not talking about a man or a woman or a thief. I'm talking about things. There are time stealers that's in our world today. And I believe Paul knew, even in Ephesians, when he wrote to that church at Ephesus, he was looking ahead to 2019. And he knew that there were time stealers. There was things that would take control of our lives and lead us to misuse the time that God gives us. Because he said, redeeming the time because the days are evil. In other words, you need to watch your time. You may need to make sure that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, seeing that the days are evil. Mm. I'm going to tell y'all, in me preaching and teaching this, y'all ain't got to worry about it not getting on my toes. I've often said this, if I preach a message, if I can't step on my own toes, then I, if I just make up, if I just get up here to get on you, then I ain't, that's not right. i got to preach this. God help us. Verse, look at that, verse 16. I read it to you. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. All funerals, we hear the statement, life is too short. I was at a funeral yesterday. And buddy, how many has ever been to a funeral at a black church? Whew. Buddy, they got, I don't know if all of them do like that, but man, they, one dude got up and started singing about, it's God's grace in the crowd. And man, they started, they was having church up in there. And I got the feeling the Holy Ghost and the preacher. I, I said, I wanted to remember what the preacher preached because I wanted to preach it here. <laughs> Not at a funeral either. But at all funerals, we hear the statement so many times saying life is too short. Amen. 
Life is too short. I want to tell you, time, the time that God gives us, the time that God If I live seven to be 70 and you live to be 70, we've all had the same amount of time. Not one of us got shortchanged. Whatever, 70 times whatever hours. 70 times how many ever hours. We've all had lived the same amount of hours. People that don't spend time in the house of God are people that don't spend time seeking God and worshiping and praying and with their family and serving others and doing these things. What's important? Are we redeeming our time? I've always said this. People make time to do what they want to. Make time to do what they want to. There's time as a precious gift and it should not be wasted away doing things that are harmful to ourselves or our families or our friends or for anybody else as a matter of fact. Time is precious. The Bible says it's like a vapor. Here today, gone tomorrow. It's like the grass that withers away. It's, it's not going to last forever. I don't understand why babies die. I don't understand why teenagers lose their life. I don't understand why some people die at 20 and other people live to 80 or 100. I don't understand all that. But I know that we've got to redeem the time that God has given us. And I hope that somebody tonight, you know, who knows? Who knows? Except God, how much time that we have. Anybody in here know exactly how much time you got left? Sometimes, and y'all have heard me say this, sometimes I, I wonder why God didn't do that, that at least we'd know when we need to get right, but he didn't do that. He did. He's the only one that knows. Who knows? Let me go to James, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm right down on the part two. I want to read one verse of Scripture. And I'll let you go. James chapter number 4. I think I have mentioned this already. Go, na go to now, ye that say, Today or tomorrow we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow. You know, we, 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 we allot time for things that hadn't even happened yet. Yet people don't allot any time to get on their knees and cry out to God. There's more people done spent more time figuring out what they're going to get for Christmas and where they're going to go on vacation in the future than they've spent praying and asking God to direct them. Hmm. James says, Where don't you just whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow? For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. In the spectrum of eternity, our time is short. In the spectrum of time itself as a whole, the 70 years that we're promised, that if you go beyond that, I believe somebody that goes beyond that is you're, you, God's blessed you. But, but the time that we've given and the time that we live in the span of eternity, in the span of time, it can't, it can't be the span of eternity because eternity they don't have time. But from the time that time started to the time shall be no more, the few years that we live is small, is just a little. But I believe that every one of us have ample time to take care of those things that's important. 
What's your priorities? What's our priorities tonight? How much time are we spending on what matters? Amen? Jesus. I'm going to pick up there Sunday morning. I may go back and hit the highlights of part one. But I, I really do believe. I, 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 can, I, can I tell you what I feel? I have felt it. If we'll really devote the time and the effort needed and the commitment needed to what God has purposed this church to be and this congregation to do, there is absolutely no telling what we could see and how many of our families and friends and things could be brought in to the Lord before this thing will end.